DFG Science TV, Bonded Concrete, Breaking Tests, How Strong is Ultra Strong? Ceilings, columns and beams are all examples of load-bearing elements used in buildings. For these key structural components of a building to perform their purpose in real life, their physical properties first need to be assessed. When performing such assessments, civil engineers need to observe certain rules known as the static proof. Before a new building material, such as the new state-of-the-art UHPC, can be put to use, the researchers, such as those at the Institute of Structural Concrete in Aachen, need to develop the necessary basis of assessment. Reliable data is primarily obtained by subjecting building elements to load tests, but these tests are costly and time-consuming. For this reason, very specific tests of individual experimental parameters are conducted as part of a larger experimental matrix. The findings from these tests can then be used in computational models, which allow other experimental parameters to be varied without the need to perform expensive real-life tests. These experimental parameters may be the position of holes in beams, for example, or the variation of the cross-section. When performing these experiments, it is necessary to make sure that the material fails as desired. If a beam is subjected to a load, this generally results in bending stress. This is easy to envisage, even for the layman, as bending stress is often visible. It causes compressive stress at the top and tensile stress at the bottom of the beam. If this tensile stress gets so great that the beam can no longer bear it, this results in tensile stress failure, and the beam breaks. In reinforced concrete and pre-stressed concrete, bending stress, such as tensile stress, is usually borne by the steel reinforcement. These beams contain steel cables in the lower cord, also known as the tension cord. Shear force failure is a little harder to imagine. You wonder how long this shear force, this load here, which is exerted from the point where the force is applied and is transmitted to the bearing, will last for. The easiest way of envisaging the way the shear force is transmitted is using these shear force flow lines. The compressive forces are shown using the blue lines, which pass along the upper cord here and are then transmitted to the bearing, while the tensile stress is shown in red. In beams made of ultra-high performance concrete, this tensile stress is borne by steel microfibers. Failure of the beam, as seen here, is referred to as tensile compressive failure. And that is the mode of failure that this project is setting out to study. Will the experiments be a success? And will the beams actually display the failure pattern the researchers are hoping for? Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.